my phone. I'm sure we're going live here. Hi, it's Dr. Sandy, and I have the lovely Makiba Matthews. Well, the tables might be turning tonight. I don't know. What do you think? I'm ready for them to turn. <laughs> you're, you're ready to do the turnaround? Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, here we go. I hope everybody's doing well out there. I wanted to just, I wanted to come on. I haven't been, you know, it hasn't been me for a while. And I figured this would be awesome to bring on my friend, Makiba, because we were just talking earlier today and I'm like, hey, what are you doing tonight? And she's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember if it was nothing. I forgot exactly how that went. But... It's always something, but nothing. <laughs> nothing for you, Dr. Sandy. I'm free. <laughs> well, my heart is like whole when we have you know our conversations, and I appreciate everybody's got to have their wing person, right? Like you got to have that person that you can like have conversations with and and talk about the things, right? Yeah. Yes, definitely, definitely. Especially so I wanna, now. Yes. I want to talk to you, Dr. Sandy. I want you to tell me what you've been up to. I got oh, a, little, I? a little blib of what you've been engaging in, but I want to hear the full detail. I want the raw, dirty truth. <laughs> you want me to get dirty? No. <laughs> <laughs> As far as honesty goes, oh, well, just some it's, detail. Always that, it, it's always that way. I mean, I know, I know. I don't hold, I don't hold back. I know. You know that's I what I love you. Right. I love that's you what too. I love about you. Now, I know you said you was traveling to New York. You was doing some stuff with um, Les Brown. Yeah, Les Brown. Tell me about that. Can you tell He's me about like, that? He is like my... I don't want to say my father because that would be kind of silly, but he's like my spiritual father. Like he doesn't know it. I mean, that kind of sounds psychotic. A little no, bit, but like he's, no. I, you know, when you listen to positive reinforcement and I talk a lot about putting yourself in a different place in regards to, yeah, things are really crappy. Like, were we just talking about how to take that break? how to take that break. This would be my break. I would listen to whatever short video on YouTube on my phone while I go to the bathroom while I'm eating a granola bar, texting my daughter and just trying to get some good affirmations. And even if it's a meme, and then I just keep repeating it to myself. Um, so involving, um, it would be Les Brown or Jim Rohn grew up with these guys in my ears because I didn't have any good real, uh, male role models in my, my life, nor female, because, you know, we can talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was just, yeah, definitely. you have to get the positive no matter where you can get the positive because mm -hmm. there's so much negative and there's so many people out to ruin your day because especially now with the things, the way that they are, it is so bad mm -hmm. and con uh, concentrated where you have a lot of domestic abuse, but it's actually in the workplace. So if you have it at mm -hmm. home, you have a double whammy and mm -hmm. amplified now, right? So when I went to New York, my goal in, in New York in Times Square was not necessarily, it was, it would have been great to have nurses, but to have the public. And as wild as Times Square is, I still was able to find a couple guys volunteering without me saying come on to hold the banner to tell everybody oh how much. wow so that really meant a lot and mm -hmm. it was only a couple people but that's okay because in this day and age right now right now right now I had a lot of people listening to me I didn't have my megaphone this time right now we need to have as many people try to help uplift nurses and I was mentioning to you, um, just I want to uh, digress a little bit. In the UK, this article was from April 1st, 2020 to 30th of April, 2021. There had been in the UK, 
200, at least 226 nurses across all settings attempted suicide. Unreal. Now, and then we go, we that jump to in America. Um, uh, we had an article that came out, and I'm sure I posted it April 15th of 2021 suicide rates. And I said, listen, we don't even know the beginning. And like, this has been going on for years, but now it's like, I'm sure it's a lot with substance abuse and alcoholism. It's going to end somewhere. It's either going to be stopping yes. or it's going to end up. Unfortunately, I don't want this to happen. Like, I, I, I mean, I do not want this to happen at all. The researchers identified 2,374 suicides among nurses, 857 suicides among physicians, and 156,141 suicides in the general public. Now, if we have 2,300, almost 2,400, that's only what they calculated. You know, they, there's probably a whole lot more. Suicides more common among nurses than, in, than the general population between 2017 and 2018. Sex adjusted incidents, 23.8 versus 20.1 per 100,000 uh, with a relative risk of 1.18. If you're in statistics. So in 2017 to 2018, the incidence, suicide incidents among female nurses was 17.1 per 100,000 versus 8.6 per 100,000 in the general female population. And we have a female dominated profession. Exactly. So what does that tell you? And we have, we, we're, we're not headed in a good direction at all. No, you know? no. And, you know, we can't constantly blow sunshine up everybody's rear end, but I will tell you that, and yes, I'm being very unscholarly. So Makiba wanted me to be just real right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm blaming her. <laughs> um, this is serious. This is absolutely serious. And if we do not start taking care of each other and, and helping each other take breaks, and and do what's necessary to report problems in massive amounts to the right places then we're going to yes. continue to have the same problem and amplified i don't know about you but um have you ever heard of a place not needing a nurse right now nowhere mm, nowhere okay. nowhere well, well you wanted to talk to me about what's been going on with with my situation right Yes. Let's hear it. All right. So, and you know, it is what it is. I was supposed to take my boards. It takes about three to four weeks maximum to get your uh, eligibility to test. I graduated mm -hmm. to uh, May 15th of 2021. I finished all of my didactic, all of my, thank you. Um, in 2019, I was admitted into the program with a combination class. Um, it was advanced pathopharmacology, which is a dual course, and it was allowed in. And I'm not going to, hey, you guys know about the stuff. I don't. You know what's needed for me to take my boards? I don't. So two years later, after like tons of issues that I had with the school, I'm not going to get into that detail. But when I graduated, and applied to take my boards, I was not able to. And then it was appealed twice. And the last appeal was about two to three weeks ago. And of course, knocked down again. All they wanted the school to do was to split the course and have it on my transcript. So I'm pending to get some classes to redo when I'm already graduated to be able to Prove to them that I have finished, you know, that I'm sufficient with beginner master's degree classes. And this is a postdoctorate attempt to get my psychiatric nurse practitioner. Well, let's not forget that um, I'm still waiting for the classes to be separated. And this is what going to be September 1st tomorrow. I'm unemployed, had to turn down an employer. I can, I'm lucky if I can get unemployment and nobody will hire me on the floor. 
That's maybe they're smart. Crazy. Maybe they're smart. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not saying this to complain. I'm just saying right. factual information. Be mm -hmm. very careful and make sure you understand what you need to do when it comes to your education. Find out like with the ANCC, with psychiatric nurse practitioner, that's only ANCC. But with F and P, you've got different credentialers, right? Mm -hmm. So they, and you, if one doesn't work, the other one can work, right? Right. You know, so, and so let me back up. I'm adjusting. I'm waiting to get these classes separated. I've already, I'm the only one that did an item analysis to prove that I have more than enough education to just sign off on those two classes. Exactly. If you're arguing that I am sufficient to take my boards with the ANCC, number one, why are you having me do that? And number two, why did you sign off on me going ahead to get to my New York license? If I was that doesn't make any sense. Be careful because it doesn't matter how experienced somebody is, no matter what, what field you're in, make sure that you understand at the end game that I didn't think that they would mess with me anymore. I thought I was done. I was going to leave everything alone. That was it. But I can't ignore the fact of the blatant disregard for my for me professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is unacceptable because there is other, I could be utilized on the floor. I have six months of psychiatric bedside nursing. Right. right? Because I had been doing clinical. I had been teaching online. I had been doing all of the, who is going to take me as a travel position? I have an interview with another college, but I'm gonna have to quit because I'm gonna be working as a nurse practitioner. That was not my goal. I exactly. can raise some scores. Absolutely. If there's something part time, right. I'll be happy to do it. But I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you right now, that's not the goal was to have to work as a nurse practitioner to change in my next phase of life, to yeah. make the change. I have nurses against violence and to make things better with promoting the the violence prevention program that we have to start getting really serious people out there that want to change the narrative now right. i don't talk about my personal stuff in the group because of the fact it's not necessary for their growth maybe for knowledge purposes so they know what to avoid right but not, it's not a growing thing. It's not uplifting. It's not something, if anyone seems to think that, that Dr. Rizaldi is just some blonde broad on there yapping at her mouth, there's a reason why I say, and I do the things that I do because I do the research. I have the factual information. I have the how right. of how to stop violence in healthcare. And as we're all becoming more apparent, and listening to everything that that we say in these webinars it's all violence prevention it is but it's not the absolute how and that's only for the ears that want to learn right that want to really make the change because yeah. they're, they're getting out of their shell they're not staying complacent they're like i don't know what to do i don't know what to do i have the what to do i have the what to do now i just need everyone's attention I've got the answers, not mm -hmm. everything, but I've got it. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when you have something that's going so the way it's every time you make that step, you have something that black, the yeah. black, because you know, you know, each step that you're going, you're hitting that brick wall, you know, you're going the right direction. And, you know, yes. Milton was a part of our organization. She's probably watching. She even said, Sandy, you've got... <laughs> Some things, just like what you just said, everything and its power to try to stop me to do from what I want to do and to help our profession, nothing's going to stop me, nothing. And I'm going to tell you, you, you wanted me to talk a little bit about myself. Yes. Like, 
so my like goal- why 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 are you so determined you know why are you the voice for all these people that are suffering in healthcare? why well it stems back where when you think about how will you show up in the face of adversity when things are so overwhelming how are you going to stand I had to make decisions that I never thought that I would have to make at 16 years old. On my own, abandoned by my mother, working three jobs part-time because I could not get a full-time job. Adversity is nothing, not a stranger. It's whether you can push forward or level off. That is, that is the definition of what you have to make for yourself. I had been homeless. I have learning disabilities. And I got a 4.0 not even finishing my, uh, my doctoral project, my, my doctoral degree, not even finishing the ninth grade in high school. I had gotten my GED. I refuse to ever let anybody else's storm change the direction of my sale because I am going to do what I have to do and what is necessary, no matter how hard it is to help not only, yes, myself, my family, but to help get awareness. And I found my reason, my passion through Nurses Against Violence Unite when I was told, again, I could not get on the floor. So I created this organization. There was nothing I help the hearts and minds of nurses to know that they are not alone. And I can never be more proud of our profession than I am today. It is my, it is absolutely my duty to make sure that we get recognized and where I'm taking my speaking career with Les Brown and his group Hungry to Speak. It is absolutely paramount. If I, if I could get the general public to help uplift nurses and if they see something to help us report it, how much change is going to happen? We have manipulation. I understand this is about me, but when we have manipulation, you're the hero, now you're not, okay? That is a manipulation to get you to work harder and to show how much of a superhero you are. Shame on them. We must not be brainwashed. Mm -hmm. We're breaking out of the shell and we will have to do everything that's necessary as a team and united in order to be able to get to our next level. Doesn't mean leaving the bedside, right? No, no it doesn't. But now I want, this leads to a whole nother question. And what I'm thinking, like listening to you, and I'm sure there's probably other people on here listening to you perhaps for the first time, how can an individual get the tools to be able to even recognize what's going on? You know, do you have a game plan for them? Do you have a laundry list? Do you, what can they do as that individual listening to you and being a part of um, Nurses Against Violence is excellent, but for that person to develop their own skills mm -hmm. to be able to realize hey this is a dangerous situation for myself and my colleagues do you have something that you can put in their hands absolutely so there is a program that i've been working on and i've been calling it the holistic crisis prevention but it's very long okay it's very long what i can say to do immediately right now immediately right now is you need to report everything if you have something that fits in age over 40, sex, religion, what's the other ones? Equal Opportunity, EEOC Commission, Equal Opportunity, oh, what is it, EEOC, whatever the EEOC, yeah, you, put in there, you can file a complaint and a lawyer will contact you back, right? You have to find any means necessary to file reports. This could be through OSHA, this could be through, and this could be anonymous. OSHA, you know, more than, more than, uh, there's a large amount of reports that are either on paper or don't even be, are not even acknowledged. So, yes, yes. like Mr. Smith punching somebody in the face, I mean, that's important. 
you know, and, but they turn it around and make it the nurse's fault. It's and fault. Said, how, do, how could we change our culture? Because, you know, and I'm not saying it's all the, the facility's fault because we are in control of our own emotions. And if we don't have control of our own emotions, then perhaps then we need to, we need to rethink of what, how we're approaching things. I talk about the RBF phase, right? Right. I do that all the time. You're not focused, you know, you're like, right, right. On and you're crushing pills and you got this, right. 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 <laughs> yes. You know, you don't know. That's my yeah, yeah, there you go. And then, or you're like, and then you sit there and you hear your name, you're like, what? Right. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to sound like that. But how many times are you apologizing? You know, and you shouldn't, you're not a sorry person, but you should acknowledge if you came off wrong, even in the break room, say, yes. hey, you know what? I just want to tell you, it's just, this is just a rough time. And I want you to know how much I care about you. You're my sister. You know, we are brothers and sisters out there and we're suffering. Exactly. So we need to acknowledge each other. And even if it's something little, acknowledge it. That's mm -hmm. important because, you know, administration, they're not watching. They're not there all the time, but you are. And if you're working a code, man, those are some great compressions. Get people to laugh. You know, in the emergency room, people would be cutting, you know, pumpkins, we would call it, you know, and it would be like an accident, but it'd be like, whoo, <laughs> you right, know, it's, exactly. or, you know, just do whatever you have to do to just break the monotony, break the monotony. I'm not saying act like a, a you know, a unprofessional out on the unit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying sometimes you got to have your own humor. If it's dark humor, that's kind of negative. So to restructure, <laughs> to restructure, you know, getting the spoon and gouging up somebody's yes. eye, yes. that's not funny. Right? <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. You know, <laughs> it's not funny. It's actually very negative. But if it, if it gets you to laugh on the temporary, then, you know, I'm not condoning violence. I'm saying we should not do that. <laughs> I'm seeing that there are some people that have been on here before. Hey guys. Hey, Brandy. So nice. To see you. I think Catherine's on here. Hi, Catherine. I was seeing you in ages. Um, so it's just really important that, you know, that's how we can take things home. Yes. And, you yes. know, and I love, I love the fact that you have this little booklet that we're going to share in another webinar, but you have this sure. booklet on, you know, I want you to describe, I know I'm, I'm always trying to bring it back around, but I, I want you briefly to talk about this little booklet. And if anybody would like that booklet, then we can arrange somehow that you can give them a discount or something on it to be able to, you know, but if not, that's okay. That's no, okay. yes, definitely a discount. I would give some away. I'm like, we're good. Yeah. Well, no. you know, but only for you, Dr. Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Only I mean, your people. And when, when, when that comes to mind, you know, I do have to say, Sandy, Dr. Sandy is very much unemployed. And, <laughs> and so there's going to be some changes with Nurses Against Violence Unite, because I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is, I want to, like the money I spend on Nurses Against Violence Unite and handing things out. And so that's all for me. And that's got to change. You can't have a viable business which is still a nonprofit, it's still a business to be bigger than the ones out there that are a joke watching everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, you have more of an impact is you, once you have a, once your organization is financially strong, mm -hmm. you're able to have a greater impact, more influence. And the more influence, what happens? We can get or our own. Every, uh... Everything is changed. Things start yeah. to change. You know, you know you, yeah. What is what is it? Those people lobbyists. We can hire yes. our own lobbyists. Yeah. You don't have to have anybody else. We can find some good people that want to do some. Do some it. Train them. That's yeah. right. But that's right. Okay. So here's the thing. Is anybody out there as serious as I am to get things rocking in healthcare? I know you all are. I have over thirty thousand and plus some out there, mm -hmm. but how serious and how far are you really willing to take it? And I'm mm -hmm. not saying doing anything illegal. I'm saying, let's get going. Let's stop the BS. 
This is not like we have people arguing about shots. It's your body, right? I don't have any business telling anybody to do anything. I'm a no. nurse. I don't judge. I don't judge. It's your body. If you choose not to do something that I don't approve of, I'm still taking care of you. Not, it's a no brainer. Yeah. You know, and I'm not getting into this whole immunization argument, but I'm just, that's all I'm saying. And if I see it in the chat, I'm, bre I'm breaking it down and I'm blocking it because that's a problem and it causes people to have bad feelings. That's not what Nurses Against Violence is about. We're changing the culture. That's exactly what we're doing. I don't want somebody to feel home, be in, crying in the corner, isolated, feeling like they have no other option to kill themselves or to go to the bottle or to, to pick up some more you know, drugs and lose their nursing license or that they work so hard for. You know, I'm not just talking about nurses. I'm talking about nurses' aides. You know how much? Yes. Like, there's like one nurses' aide to like 20, 25 people. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. And yes. you expect them to stay at the bedside when they have, like, they're burning out. I couldn't even, when I was a nurses' aide for 15 years, I grew up in nursing. That was one of my jobs. I grew up as a nurses' aide assistant. And I, and that's how I started my whole nursing career. And then I was a nurse's aide and then a CNA and then an ER tech for a combination of 15 years, LPN for four years, RN since 2010. And I just kept going forensic nursing certificate, bachelor's degree in nursing. Then I, um, then my certified nursing, uh, certified legal nursing consultant, master's in nursing education, doctor of nursing practice. And then I said, you know what? I finally figured out what I want to do when I grow up. I love to make people feel good and I want to do more of it. And had Nurses Against Violence saw a, an abundance amount of pain that people were not talking about. I wanted to go into psych. Now, this is what's happened to me. And that's this, it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. It's not okay, but it's okay. Where mm -hmm. we can decide to be the victim or we could be the victor of our circumstance. Yes. And this is where we have to individually make that decision of where we want to go. Do you want to be the victim or do you want to be the victor? That's what defines those that are with me and those that are spectators. So and I'm not saying you need to come to Clearwater, Florida and we just take over Florida. I'm saying you could take over your own area. Let's get this going. We only need one centralized place. We need nurses against violence and we need it concentrated everywhere. This, this should be a 100,000, 500,000 member group. Yeah. It's yeah. free. Why aren't there more people in the group? Because people are just not talking about it because they're afraid to have their coworkers on there because there's so much incivility. I see it. I know it. Yeah. But if you want to share a story, you can reach out to Makiba. You can reach out to anybody that's on the admin panel. You can mm -hmm. say, Hey, I need to, I need, you can even post in the group as anonymous. I will see who it is, but you'll be posted as anonymous and you can put your anonymous statement in there. And the people will respond and they do it very much lovingly because that's the culture that I'm creating. We're conditioning things so it's better. And we, we are modeling the leadership that we need in nursing. And I'm not talking about when I went to school, when I went to nursing school, I had nurses that were taught by nuns in, in Buffalo, New York. Let me tell you something. And when I went to Minnesota, I worked in a convent to do COVID swabbing. I fell in love with those nuns. Like I absolutely knew this was something after all these years that just, it just validated so much for me, wow. that strong, strong personality. That is that, that was it for me. I just, I knew where I got it from. And it was just so amazing to see it as where I've come as an accomplished nurse to come back and walk in this path of where I started, where I could be virtually homeless, where I don't have income coming in. And it's actually in pain, there's always going to be a huge, um, there's always, what is the, what, how do I want to say it? In the pain, there's always a rainbow, we'll just say.
there's always something good that comes from the pain. And I'm not saying to stay in pain, but if you're that uncomfortable, you're going to change everything in your life and make it for the better because whatever wasn't working is going to not be in your future. You're going to, you're going to take off from this point forward. Yes. So it's, it's important that we have to, however way that we're thinking of things negative, when you think a negative comment in your head, try to restructure the words. Instead of I can't, you can. How far more, and this is where a lot of, see, hey, Brandy, yes, incivility and toxic culture of suck it up. Yep, yeah. and we do have to suck it up, but here's the thing. No and yes. It has to make you angry enough to change. Yeah. It has to make you angry enough to say enough's enough. This is what's going to change. And we're going to have classes that are going to help nurses to get past these negative things. We're going to have, you know, coping mechanisms, anything that doesn't serve you, that is not helping your mind right now, that is not helping you keep it a clear thought to be able to, to be able to breathe, then it doesn't serve you. It is time to get rid of the negative. If somebody wants to breathe down your neck, then you need to have a conversation with them. And if they don't like it, that's it. I'm not yep. saying quit, but you've expressed, you have to be angry enough to start expressing how you feel, but in a professional, right. professional way behind closed doors, I didn't appreciate you know how many you how many you know how many bosses I've talked to. How many? Almost every boss that I've had, I don't appreciate the way that you're talking to me. Is there something that we can do to build this relationship? Because that's what it comes down to, right? So we have, we have a lot of problems that are happening, but is it we are growing from it? I hope people are understanding that we're growing from these problems, but is that there's no growth. There's no in pain. There's, there's always growth in pain. I think that's the way I want to say it. So when things are uncomfortable, you take the next step, right? And then you keep going. You have to take baby steps. Yeah. I have posted today that, um, there's no change without the challenge. Oh, yeah. So you have to have some challenges in order for there to be change, right? And especially, yes, that's the whole thing. And yeah. especially in our field, we already know it's like, it's rocky. You know, it's a rocky field, yeah. ups and downs. So you're dealing with a lot of emotions that are coming quick and fast. So I totally understand where you're coming from. And we do need people that are going to pioneer this and really being able to be almost like, um, um, a section of nurses for violence in their own area, you know, right. really getting the word out there, kind of like an ambassador, you know? Yep. And we are going to have programs that are going to be able to teach people how to Excellent. do that. And I'm going to have a, like one-on-one, -on -one. we're going to have all kinds of stuff that are going to be happening. You know, it, it, it's very <clears throat> it's crucial that we have to put something because when we have a program, I hope everybody knows that proceeds go to nurses against violence and it's because it's important that we get the funding. We have to start getting movement and government. Do you know, I, I responded to a post earlier today um, in reference to, well, what happens if we did like a huge rally? Nin 2019, I had seven people and four or five of them were friends. Mm -hmm. And it was a total of seven of us, okay? So people might and they might not come to the rally. Either way, it's still a success. It was a success because I was able in New York City to get two people, not one, two people to hold up the banner. And it's because everybody is just trying to hang on. Everybody's just trying to hang on. And it doesn't bother me to be like get up on a in the middle of Times Square yelling at people that I don't even know it doesn't even bother me because this is how passionate I feel about changing the culture of healthcare. I could have gotten mugged I was walking around with my nurse hat I didn't care you know I'm proud of what we do absolutely 
because there's nobody on the face of this planet that's better than besides our nurses aides. They're amazing. Yes. But we are the backbone of healthcare period, hands down. And we will, when we decide to stop making our own little tiny groups and unite in one group for against violence and toxic culture, how powerful do you think that we, we would be? I want to ask you something now. Um, you know, I know your audience um, on is probably not all nurses, but maybe the majority, yes. But, you know, we do have other healthcare workers that, you know, may be joining the live. So what would you tell them, you know, because I know a lot of our conversation is geared towards nurses, but it's mm -hmm. not just for nurses. Now, right. they have the same rights as well to report things and things Absolutely. like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, how, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, go ahead. Maybe you're talking about the chain of command, you know, how, how that works. Okay. So when something happens on the floor, if you're not satisfied and, okay, so... And I'm going to go over the chain of command. Uh, I'm going to go over the um, the levels of. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it before. It's on YouTube as well. The different levels of victimization. Now I don't like the victim word, but I'm going to show you, like what you need to do in a visual form, okay? And how it affects on every level, like heroes. You know how that affects people now. Well, people don't even know that even just handing you a cup to have a, you know do a urine specimen it's necessary yes i understand but it's the, what is it for is it is it for the nurse that just got her jaw broken or is it for the facility things like that so but as far as the chain of command it's very important because if you're charged nurse they might not even be on the floor for like a year maybe your supervisor may not be on the floor for a year i'm using nursing as an example you can feed into whichever profession you're in and you're listening to. So your charge nurse is your immediate person you talk to. If you don't get satisfaction, you go to what? Either the nurse manager if they're there or the supervisor. The super, the nurse manager, I mean, the person, the um, charge nurse might not even have a year out of school. They should not be charge nurse, but we love them. And that's not their <laughs> fault, okay? Exactly. So any experienced nurses, I'm sure help them Right. When they're working and to try to mo model them and to, you know, and help groom them into understanding more about the role. That is nursing. That's what I know is nursing. If that doesn't work. Then the nurse manager, they need to have a report. Right. Now, let me back up. When Mr. Smith punches a nurse's nurse and breaks their jaw, do you think that a paper report is filed? I'm giving it away already. Is a paper report filed or is it done in the computer? When you give a report, how many people do you tell the nurse, right? Mm -hmm. Do we tell the charge nurse? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Right. So, but does the charge nurse do any kind of report? No, she should. But they tell the supervisor or they right. tell the, right, but that's where it ends. These code grays, these code grays, what they do, which they're violent codes for patients, sometimes it's grandma throwing a milk. That's the only time it gets reported on a paper. So are we really reporting? There's massive amounts of documentation out there saying no. The Joint Commission has acknowledged no. OSHA has acknowledged no. So we all have to take our part and to report things as painful as they are, right? To report things that are happening, right? So you have to follow the chain of command. Otherwise they can use that against you. And then, well, you didn't follow chain of command. You obviously were taught that in orientation and then they start micromanaging on you. And that's where incivility starts and people end up leaving. So the solution I have is to report anything that is important to you. I would report things, even if there's not an injury that, mm -hmm. that occurred. And if people do this on a massive level, we can overturn everything. It's so simple from an advocacy standpoint, not an education point, because that's how I'm trying to change my education is right. take the advocacy part out and have the education piece only, right? right. We mm -hmm. have to start reporting everything. 
I don't care if there was an injury or if there wasn't, if there wasn't or was an injury, it has to be reported. Otherwise, where are they getting their numbers? You don't have time to do that. But there's a system that we can implement that can make it easy, even if it's not. I did it even with the box and a ballot. You know, was it something that you want to go and get, you know, anybody could have filled out these forms. Why can't they do that? You know, I was removed from my clinical rotation because of that. We were about to implement it in the ER from a med search floor, the ER, ortho, um, oncology. We were about to launch it throughout the whole hospital. Bye-bye, Sandy. This is for my master's degree or actually in the beginning of my doctorate. When they came out with the first end nurse abuse panel that I was on, I told my preceptor, she was very proud of me. And Joint Commission came out with Sentinel event, I think it was 59, patient on uh, patient verbal and physical violence, right? Mm -hmm. and, she, and then their response, the ANA's response was, or, uh, was that we were doing the end nurse abuse panel and I was on it. So I divulged a lot of information, but I kept patient information out. I kept all of that. In one week of doing the balloting, it went up 900%. 900%. Now it is mandatory that these facilities are supposed to be reporting this to OSHA and the C I believe the CDC as well. I have to go back over my notes, but it's mandatory. How are they supposed to make it? How, how are things supposed to get better? It's all also outlined in the Sentinel event 59. And it's also in the nurses and uh, nurse against violence uh, group support. It's underneath the documents files. Mm -hmm. It's underneath mm -hmm. there. So if you guys are looking for that. So we have the solution for the advocacy and the education part. We have to report no matter what. Do you imagine? I mean, that's one of the reasons they probably Googled me. That's probably why I'm not on the floor right now, because we have refrigerator trucks that were just delivered to, uh, to Sarasota Memorial. You know, I mean, it's really bad down here in Florida. So, and I'm sure it's like that everywhere, oh, but it's, you know, they don't, I don't think they want me on the floor and, and I, I mean, well, I, all I want to do is help. Now, maybe nurses might be afraid of that, but you're not Dr. Rizaldi, right? A doctoral degree nurse should be on her, on the, on the floor to find out what's going on, but maybe they don't want me on there for many reasons. So I don't know. I can't. Okay. So I'm leaving it a mystery. And that's all it is. All I could do is keep moving forward. Because that's I don't right. solve mysteries, right? Right. Um, so, you know, that's that's just the way I see things. I mean, there's just a lot of things. I'm working on my speaking career because mm -hmm. I feel like if I can talk to the masses about the things that you know nurses are getting hurt out in the field by patients, you know, and talk to you know briefly, but just enough that the mind is like, wait, did she say that? Patients are getting hurt and then they'll go and talk to their family members. Yeah, we need sometimes a crutch to help us get healed enough to run, right? Walk and then run. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we got any comments. Okay, Brandy, um, I love you, Brandy. I think it's really important that you said to talk about it. Yes. And if it doesn't work, then you might just have to move on. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you have people that aren't, aren't, this is why, okay. So when you have a company, and I know that we're running over time, when you have a, when, when you have people that aren't talking about things that are, they keep it bottled up inside when they keep it bottled uh -huh. up inside and they don't feel like they could talk to somebody, it creates a very hostile environment for that person. Now I want to take another step in, into the same direction where, so I've gotten in arguments with not necessarily big full-blown arguments, people about the staffers. I call them about the, I call them staffers. The, mm -hmm. the people that constantly talk about staffing ratios, they're important. I get it. I absolutely get it. But I wanted to know why, why do we have bad staffing ratio numbers? Reporting was my first thing, right? And then it led into culture. How many people, if you see a movie or you had bad experience at the nail salon, how many people are you going to tell about that nail salon to stay away from them? Everybody. 
or your friends, you're going to be like, this is a terrible job. Look at this. <laughs> Don't go there. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying, it, you know, we want, we, we are so like tired of the customer service. But what about the customer service? Like, did you know that the future of age caps is relationship building? Wow. It's blatant right there. Relationships that they would try to ask somebody something and they blow them off. Now, how can we have relationships with patients if we were never taught that mental health is just as important as physical health? We're not taking care of ourselves because you're, when you're, you're when your plane's going down and you're having turbulence and that oxygen thing comes down, who did they tell you to put the oxygen on first? They say you to put it on yourself first, because if you can't help yourself, you won't have any, you won't have enough energy to help the person next to you. But we don't function like that in nursing. That's why the whole culture but has we to be are, changed. But we are but we're changing that wording. Yes. We are because it starts with me. It starts with you. It yes. starts with Brandy. It starts with everybody that's in our, in our watching us right now. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So do you have any other questions? Cause I know I go on and on. I, uh, I love you by the way. I think you're amazing. I love you. I think you're an amazing person. Um, your fight, your, your, your fight, your drive in you is inspiring. Um, I hope that, uh, the more you, the more people really listen, not just watch, really listen, that they allow themselves to kind of soak up everything that you're pouring into them and be moved to take action. Sometimes it's just the simplest thing. I know you spoke a little bit about your course. I know it's under construction a little bit or renaming. Yes, we're re we're rebranding a little bit, um, just to make okay. it a little bit more. I have somebody that's working with me um, that I'm really excited, and plus I want to bring it a little bit more up to date um, because there's a lot more. I was talking about COVID in it, but now it's gotten to be you know, okay. second wave, third wave, fourth wave, Delta. Mm -hmm. And yeah. anyone can take that course, right? Absolutely. Anyone, a CNA, phlebotomist, anyone, yes. right? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm gonna do I think it this is awesome. Thanks. It's taken a lot of, um, a lot of uh, employment hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken a lot. If people just understood, or even cared an ounce, I would appreciate for all the tears, literal tears of validation, uh, tears of unemployment, <laughs> losing my jobs, retaliation I have received. Um, I've put myself in situations with, you know, like I'll work on the floor. Like I worked on the floor up until like March of last year, you know, and I will do whatever I have to do to stick up for somebody that's not okay. And we like, I have a whole profession that's not okay right now. So I get very little sleep and there's very little time that this is not something that I eat, breathe into my existence because all I wanna do is help our profession to get past this. And it's always gonna be there, but we have to be able to figure out how to, yeah. So before we end, I always like for people to leave with something. Three things that someone can do today, tomorrow, in the near future to keep themselves safe and to keep their coworkers safe or just their mental together. So when you're, I'm gonna tell you if you're goal setting, if there's something that you're goal setting and that you're trying to further your education and you're constantly getting barriers in your life, never take no for an answer. It's just, it's just no for right now, right? You keep pressing it. You, if you want it, you'll go get it. Mm -hmm. So here's the second thing. When life gets you really, really hard, don't walk away. It is something telling you that there's something that needs to be fixed. It might not be you, of course, we know it might be the culture, but we have to own some of that as well. 
are we responsible for the reactions that we get? Are we, right? Once we decide that we're not gonna allow whatever's happening out there that's negative to affect us in that negative space, we can start keeping ourselves positive. Mm -hmm. Keep breathing. We, we hear and teach that, but are we doing that? Yes. Exactly. Listening to positive refer, um, you know, like people in your ear and get, I'm giving you a bunch. I'm not giving you just three, get rid of the negative people in your life. If people are going to be negative and bring you down and make you continuously, you know, say this, think the same negative comments all the time in your head, that might not be the person that you want to be around. Start tuning into more positivity, like the things that we talk about in nurse talk. How about the things that, you know, maybe I might say something that might trigger something. Les Brown, if you don't know who he is, go on YouTube. Mikiba, you have a great little booklet that, that you're going to give out. It's amazing. And then we have Jim Rohn. We have Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Thomas, Eric Thomas. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Like I have a video that I'll post in our group. If you, do, if you take out the sales stuff and you just apply it to how it means for you, it's called you owe you, right? You owe yourself, you owe you, Eric Thomas, look it up at seven minutes. Even if you have to listen to that, to get you motivated to just mm -hmm. like, say, you know what, no matter what the BS comes my way, I'm going to get through today. I'm going to make it exactly. And, and then I'm going to keep going. Right. Yes. There's certain little things. Like I love Eric Thomas. Like I yeah, listen to these yeah. little reaffirmations and it just like the ones that I identify with the most, it really, I'm hungry. I'm going mm -hmm. to, I am, I have some greatness within me and I'm going to affect somebody today. My goal out in the field was to, even though I'm not, a, I guess I am a people, people pleaser. I'm not trying to be, but I want my patients to be satisfied. I want them to be able, like, I'll take the worst patients and I will turn them into my best friend at report. And then they'll be thanking God when I get back because that nurse doesn't have an idea how to work with patients that are in distress. And that's what I do. So never take no for an answer. Listen to those positive thoughts, those positive, somebody speaking to you, no interruptions, somebody speaking to you for at least 10 minutes a day usually in the morning and at night, but if you need it during the day, listen to it again. And then just no matter what comes your way, just know, just know that you are going to get past that moment and you're going to get past all of this because we are here, Nurses Against Violence Unite, we are here for you. You, we, you have tons of mentors in here. You have tons of people that are in this group. We don't endorse any programs. We don't, mm -hmm. you know, we don't do any that nurses against violence has, we have our own stuff. It's a nursing organization. And there's just so many things that I want to say, but that is, those are the main things that I want to say. And I'm sure I'll think of something and put it in the chat, but it's very important that we all have to get rid of the negative in our life. Now I'm not saying quit the job because I know the job is very negative right now but we are there for a reason. We are the yeah. sunshine in somebody's darkness. That's a lot to put on somebody, I understand, but we are. Those people are dying out there. And what do you do? You know, what do you do? If I could trade, if I could trade jobs with somebody for like, until I finish my boards, I totally do it. I totally do it in a heartbeat. They won't, they won't allow me on there. I'm trying, I'm still trying, but it's important to know that even though you feel alone, you're not, we all have something going on and all of us are here for each other. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's a great way to end, you know, just reminding us that we're all here for each other. We're all playing on the same team and we're all going through the same challenges. Maybe might show up a little different but we all go into the same challenges. Life itself is a challenge and mm -hmm. just have to appreciate the struggles and know that if we keep doing, making the right decisions, up, uplifting each other, that we're going to see the brighter side of it. And thank you so much, Dr. Sandy. I'm, 
I love being able to ask you a bunch of questions. And next time it's going to be even deeper. (laughs) (laughs) Nikiba, you're amazing. And I'm so glad that we're friends. And I want to thank everybody that's out there. Let me see if there's anybody. Oh, Taylor, you know, oh my God. Hey, Taylor. I don't know Taylor, but hey, Taylor. (laughs) I wish I could work with you too. I'm telling you, we would have so many laughs. Um, it's, it's so important. And if you guys ever, you know, put something out there, you ever have a question that we have to allow in or whatever like that, you know, we'll be the first and have the honor to respond first and, um, to be able to help you out a little bit, you know, we're all having something going on right now and we just have to be there for each other because that's the only way that we're going to be able to break through to the other side. So I want to thank everybody for coming on and, and yes, I'm Dr. Sandy, and this is uh, Miss McKeeba, <laughs> and um, I want I am grateful. I am so grateful for our group and and our just everybody that follows us. So thank you so much. You guys thank have you. a great week. Make it better. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Sandy. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>